Paul told us about putting on the whole armor of God, the one thing that he said, he, he said, and taking the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen? Well, that's the only thing that God's given you to fight with. And if you don't know the Word, then how can you fight a good fight? When the enemy's coming against you, if you don't know the Word of God, amen, then what have you got to fight the enemy with? What do you think the Word meant whenever God said in His Word? He said, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Well, what are you going to, what are you going to resist him with? To resist him means to withstand him. What are you going to withstand him with if you don't know the Word of God? When Jesus was uh, led by the Spirit of the wilderness and the enemy came and tempted him, amen, Jesus stood and said, It is written this. You're going to need the Word in the last day. Amen, church. Don't just depend on your preacher to give you the Word. Amen. You need to get in this book that you pack around. Amen. Amen. It's more than just a book to pack under your arm that says the Word of God. We need to get in the Word. Amen. And read it. And get it in your spirit that you can fight a good fight. You'll never. I, just, I, I can't see how people can ever say, I fought a good fight. If they don't have the word to fight with. Amen, church. Praise God when Paul said, Taking the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Let me tell you something. Hey, man, a song's good, but it's going to take more than a song to get rid of the devil. It's going to take more than just a shout to get rid of the devil. It's going to take more than just speaking in tongues to get rid of the devil. You're going to have to know the word. We're in, the, we're, in a, we're in an evil day. We're in the last day. But the Bible told us, it said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. And see whether they be of God. We're going to have to know the word in the, in the last day. In the day that we're in right now, I'm not talking about down the road. You're going to need the word to stand in the last days. Praise God. And I want to know it, don't you? I believe that's the reason so many people, brother, are all being cheated out of their inheritance. Many times, you know, you go buy a policy and uh, uh, you think maybe you're covered on something and it may you, know, you may not be covered. Well, you've got to read what's in your policy to know, amen, what uh, uh, you're paying for and what's, uh, if something happens, if you're covered or not. A lot of people don't know what the Word of God has for them. And that's the reason the enemies are cheating them out tonight because they don't know that God said it in His Word and God ain't a man that He can lie. God said it. Amen. He's got to do it if it's in His Word. That's why I want to know it, don't you? I want to know what this book says to me. That I can stand on it no matter what the enemy says. That I can stand on it and say it is written. Praise God. You love Him tonight? You love Jesus? Give Him another big cheer. We appreciate it. If you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me to the 78th chapter of the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 78, and I'm going to read tonight, starting from verse 1. i got quite a few scriptures that I want to read tonight to get to the message, but I've got to actually read all of this to, in order to lay a foundation to get to the message. You know, before you can build a house, you've got to lay a, a foundation. And I believe a lot of times before you can really preach a sermon, you've got to lay a foundation to it, don't you? Amen. So, Psalm 78 and verse 1, Give ear, O my people, to my law, and incline thy ears to the word of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. Which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generations to come the praise.
praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works which he hath done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. That the generation to come might know them, even the children who should be born, and who should arise and declare them to their children. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their hearts aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carried bows, turned back in the day of battle. They kept not the covenant of God, and refused to walk in His law. And forgot His works, His wonders that He had shown them. Marvelous things did He, in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt and in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through, and he made the waters to stand as a heap. In the daytime also he led them with a cloud, and all the night with a light of fire. He claimed the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink out drink as out of the, the great depths. He brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the most high in the wilderness. And they cried God in their hearts by asking me according to their lust. Yea, they spoke against God and said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Therefore the Lord heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, and his anger also come up against Israel, because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven, and he rained down manna upon them to eat and gave them of the corn of heaven, Man did eat angels' food, he set them meat to be full. He caused an east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he brought in the south wind. He rained flesh upon them like dust, fed them fowls like the sand of the sea, and he let it fall in the midst of their camp round about their habitations. So they did eat and were well filled. For well, he gave them their own desire. They were not estranged from their lust, but while their meat was yet in their mouth, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. For all this they sinned still and believed not in his wondrous works. Therefore, their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble. While he slew them, they, then they sought him and they returned, inquired early after God. And they remembered that God was their rock and the high God their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth and they lied unto him with their tongue. And their heart was not right with him and Neither was they steadfast in his covenant, but he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquities and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did stir up all of 
and did not stir up all of his wrath. For he remembered that they were but yet flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. How often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tried God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand, nor the day in which he delivered them out from their enemy. Now he hath wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zone, and had turned their rivers in the blood and their their floods, and they could not drink. And he sent divers sorts of flies among them, which devoured them, and frogs that destroyed them. And he gave also their increase unto the caterpillar and their labor under the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hell and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle also to hell and their flocks to hot thunderbolts. And he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Amen. Praise God. Give the Lord a cheer and you can be seated. I want to preach tonight from verse 41. Well, the Bible said they limited the Holy One of Israel. And I want to preach tonight on take the limits off God. Amen. Amen. You know, many times I hear people say and make this remark. Probably every one of us here has been guilty of saying this. We say, well, if we could see God do a miracle, it'd be easier to believe God. And yet we're just exactly like Israel. We have seen the mighty wondrous works of the hand of God. Amen. Do many things. And yet today, amen, we're just like Israel. The purpose that God, amen, had did all that he did down through their generations. He meant for them to tell of his wondrous works. He said, speak it unto your children and your children after their children.
way we should do if we was laying flat on the hard deathbed tonight? I mean, if we had cancer in the final stages, and doctors told us there ain't nothing they could do. When we come to God, you know what we should do? We should say, God, I got such a little problem, I ain't even bothering you with it. Amen, church. Because you want me to tell you something? You may sit here tonight and you may think you've got a big problem. Hey, Amen. But you know what your problem is to God? It's just as a grain of sand. It ain't nothing to this God. Hey, Amen. And we serve tonight. I tell you that God, hey, Amen, is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. That's the way Paul treated God. Paul said, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or even think. According to the power that's working in us, that thing that's moving in me and you tonight, that same spirit that raised him from the dead that lives in you. Amen. The spirit in the beginning time. And when God looked, you know, God spoke to me one time and said this. And I'll never forget it. He said, you're preaching me a healer. You preach me the healer. You preach me the healer. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Rapha. The Lord who healed me. He said, but I'm not only a healer. He said, I am a creator. Huh? Do you understand the night you got that with inside of you that stood one time, amen, and looked upon the earth, and the Bible said the earth was void, amen, and darkness, amen, was upon the face of the deep, and we serve a mighty God that stood there, amen, and took nothing, amen, and made something, oh, God did, and say, let there be light, and there came light, I'm telling you tonight, if we
be in this family. I think God will be just as big to you. As big as you. He'll be just what you make him to you. If you make him a big God, he'll be a big God. If you make him a little God, he'll be a little God to you. Amen. If you make him a God that don't know what he's doing, sitting up there in heaven, and you wonder sometimes and say, God, amen, do you hear me? God, are you going to move? Amen. I tell you, we got to get a hold of ourselves. Amen. God said that Israel, they saw my wonders, and they saw my miracles. Amen. And in all of this, they still sinned. But you know what we say, boy, if we can just see God do a miracle. Let me tell you what God said. I'm coming to the place. If God does it or don't, he's still God. If God don't ever heal another person in Whitley Branch, he's still God. If God don't ever, amen, never save another soul, amen, he's still God. If God don't ever move again, if we never feel another chill bump, amen, if we never shout in this building again, I said he's still God. He's still God. I said he's still, amen, he's still God. Whether he does or he don't, he's still God. Listen to what he said. The rich man said, I've got five brothers. He said, send one from the, the dead said, to warn him. You know what Jesus said? He looked at him and said, they have Moses in the law. Let him hear that. He said, but if they won't hear that, he said, they won't hear them. He said, they would not believe the one would raise from the dead. And you know what? We're living in a day right now that if God was to perform a miracle in our midst, we'd sit around, it wouldn't enthuse us, it wouldn't excite us. We'd sit around, amen, people are actually saying today, well, I believe they heard them, amen, to do that. I believe they paid them to do it. I tell you tonight, amen, we got limits on God that we better get off Amen. He said they wouldn't believe the woman raised from the dead. They saw everything that Jesus did. They saw him in the in the land of Egypt. They saw him turn water into blood. They saw him, they saw him send frogs in the land. They saw him send fire and hell. Amen. Wingled together. And the Bible said even in the land of Zoan, amen, they still tried God. What are you doing whenever you're saying God can you? You're trying him. You know what? You can't get people to see this. They don't want to come to reality. But actually, whenever God says something in his word and you don't believe it, Hey man, you can't believe it. You know what? You're actually saying to God, God, you are a liar. If God told us we're healed by his stripes and we can't believe that, what we're actually saying is you are a liar. I mean, somebody said, God, let's don't put it that way. Yeah, let's put it that way. Let's, let, 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 hey man, let's put the pieces of puzzle together and we'll find out what we've done. I'm telling you tonight, hey man, God's dealt with my spirit said, tell him it's time to take the limits off from me. It's time, hey man, to move the boundary lines back. It's time to let me come in. It's time to let me perform. Hey man, and God can't move if you've got the boundaries. Hey man, set on God. They, some of you sitting here tonight, how could you doubt God? How could you? 
You saw God do so many things. They did the same thing, Brother Spirit. They saw God. You know what they did? They stood at a Red Sea. And you know what they watched God do? They watched God miraculously take and divide the, the sea and make a wall on each side of them, amen, that they could go through on dry ground. And they seen God do every bit of that, amen, and still yet, you know what the Bible said, amen, that they did not believe God. We're guilty. We've seen God move. We've seen what God can do. Amen. How in the world can people in America today not believe God? They ought to be more miracles in America than they are anywhere. Amen, church. There should be miracles that happen every night in Whitley Branch. I said there should be miracles happening every night here. Somebody said, but I, I, I believe it just ain't time. And I believe, hey amen, God just ain't ready. Hey amen, Jesus was ready 2,000 years ago when he went to Pilate's Hall and he was being wounded. Hey amen, but we can be healed. But I'm going to tell you something. Hey amen, if we don't take the restrictions, hey amen, and take the limits off from God, hey amen, if we got God's hands tied up, hey amen, the Lord God can't move. Why don't you untie God's hands? You'd be surprised the people, amen, sitting in churches and synagogues over America, amen, that's got God's hands literally tied up, amen, to where God can't do nothing for them. And it grieves my spirit. It grieves my heart. When I hear preachers say they're ordained and called of God, and they stand up in pulpits, amen, and they say, God used to heal, and God used to save, and God used to do all of that. What are they going to do with Hebrews 13 and 8? That Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, amen, today, and forever. I tell you what, he ain't never quit healed, he ain't never quit saving, he ain't never quit moving, amen, but the reason God can't move, amen, we've got boundaries set on him. God can only move as far as your boundary lines are. Huh? If God moves in, you know what? People that owns land, they got boundary lines. They can put up signs, no hunting. But if you're not on their land, there ain't nothing they can do about it. You know, they, can, they only have the authority within the boundary. And Webster finds the word limit as boundaries. And God said, there's a lot of people got boundary lines set on me. Huh? Amen, church. Amen. But listen, Paul said unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Do you understand tonight? Amen. That the hardest thing you can think of in your mind is simple to God. It ain't nothing to God. The hardest thing you can come to God with tonight would be simple for God. We were to look at every one of us in here tonight. We, we, we judge one another by saying, well, I believe your problem's bigger than mine. We got, we got somebody here tonight that needs a bone. Needs a hip bone. As long as we keep saying God looks like you ain't going to do it, he ain't going to do it. Because you know why? God can only move in your boundary lines. Hey Amen. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move my boundary lines on out. I'm moving them on out. Hey Amen. Praise God. Let me tell you something. Other. Whenever you come through my prayer line, you know what I do? I pray that God moves for you. I ain't praying for a God that can't move. But I pray for the woman tonight that said, I need a heart. Hey Amen. I said, God, give her a heart. Give her a new heart. Hey Amen. Create her a new heart. Take 
Huh? And the Bible told me and you, it said, if you be risen with Christ, then seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, and set your affections on things above, and not upon things of this earth. Is that what his word said? Amen, church. If anybody can believe God, you and I should be able to believe it. I, I can't understand. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. You go to some of these countries where they've never heard God, never heard the gospel, never heard the name of Jesus. Amen. And you can preach Jesus and preach the Word of God to them. And you know what happens? Miracle on top of miracle happens. Deaf mutes talk. Blind eyes are open. Lame people are healed. Blinded eyes are open. And you can preach your lungs out in America and people sit right in church looking at you and saying amen and say, I believe God can do anything. Let me preach a while. Me and you will sit here and say, God, I believe you can do anything. But you remember the story I told you one time of the, of the man? Here's where it is. Here, here, listen. If it don't happen, we can't blame God. We've got to blame ourselves. The man stretched the wire across. You remember? Here it is. I never, I never forget that. When I hear that, I never forget it. I said, God, ain't that just exactly like your people? We'll jump up in church and say, God, I believe you can do anything. God, I believe, God, you can heal me. God, I believe you can. I believe God can do anything. That man asked him, he said, do you believe I can walk that high wire? He said, I believe you can. He got him a wheelbarrow, went up there on that wire. He put the wheel on, looked at that man and said, I believe you can. He said, okay, get in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> huh? And you know what? He didn't believe he could then. It's another thing when you say, God, I believe you can. And God looks at us and says, get in the wheelbarrow. Now, you know what that means? Somebody said, but preacher, I don't, I don't get the picture. Tell me what it means. It means, you know what? He believed he could do it, but he was going to see if he trusted him to do it. God's going to see if men you really trust him. Amen, church. Praise God. It's time men you step. Amen. Say, God, amen. I said I believe you could. And getting in the real world. Amen. You know what the devil will tell you? What if you die? I mean, mean you'll get in church and say, God's got it all in control. we actually believe that God had it all in control, we'd stand and say, God, I'm not going to leave here till you say I'm leaving. And when God says I'm leaving, I'm gone. Huh? Let me tell you something other church. You can believe all you want to. People say, amen, the respirator, the life machine, amen, is keeping them here. i got news for you. If somebody's on a breathing machine and they, they come out of that thing tomorrow, I'm not saying no breathing machine, but I know who the breathing machine is. I know who holds death and life in the palm of his hand. Amen. And God, amen, give us life and God can take it. Amen tonight, church. And for God gets through with you, amen, the devil will never be able, amen, to take your life because you know why. Amen, God is in control. Do you know that Jesus' disciples even had a hard time believing him? And you know what? What puzzles me is even how his disciples walked with him and they saw him walk on water, man. If I seen somebody walk on water, I'd probably pass out. You know the reason God can't raise the dead among me and you? We die if we've seen the dead raised. 
If they had a casket in here tonight and a man had raised up, you know what we'd all do? We'd all faint. Have a heart attack and die. And we get up here and say, I'm serving the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though we were dead, yet shall he live. Amen. I've got news for you. You better get ready. God can't do nothing that he prepares me for. And we're not prepared to see the dead raised. Amen. But when time God just do with me and you, when we see the dead raised, amen, that ain't going to be no more than a common told to me and you. We're going to say, that's just like God. Amen. That's just like God. Amen. I tell you not. Amen. How people have seen Jesus time after time after time move. And we come up against another little trial. Lord, it just don't look like I'm going to make it. Boy. grace of God sees fit to give me just a few more days. On November the 2nd of this year, just in the next week or so. Amen. I'll be 20 year old in God. And in 20 years, I've never seen God fail me one time. I've seen God perform. I've seen God come through. Amen. 18 years of that has been a ministry on the field full time. Amen. Living by faith. Amen. And God's put food on the table. He's put clothing on the back. He's given me new vehicles. He's done everything. Amen. And how can me and Missy stand after we've been together 11 years? How? You've been with me for 11 years. And how could you stand and say, Amen, I don't know if God's going to give me a house or not. How? We do what we should say, stick around. Hey man, God's probably got two or three of them for me. He said, Preacher, do you believe that? I can show you what he told Israel. He said, I'll give you houses you've not built. I'll give you vineyards you ain't planted. I'll give you houses full of good things. Hey man, God said, I'll give it all to you. Hey man, church. Hey, son of you. Hey man, take a living off from God. If you take a limit off of God, you know what he'd do? He'd pay your mortgage loan off. He'd pay your house off. He'd pay your automobile off. Amen. He could take the restrictions off of God. I'm looking for a lost dead uncle that I don't even know to die. <laughs> for an enemy. For us. I don't know. It may be that man walked in here tonight. On the Giovanni's, don't he? God may just been put him close to me now. Maybe he get a good look at me. God may say, I'm going to use you to bless him. I don't know what God's doing, but I know he's doing something. I think God's putting people around us for a reason. That's one thing that should never come out of our mouth. Reckon if God will ever give us a house or not. When that old 69 mile trailer floors came in. And God sees fit that we need one. You know what God's got? He's got another one. Hey Amen. And by the time that one rots away, God's got another one. And by the time that one goes, God's got another one. Hey Amen, church. Rob Parsley's a preaching my message right now. No more crumbs. Writing books on it and everything else. Just preaching last week. I said, man, I preached that months ago. And God, when, when God began to deal with me on that message, I, 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 can, I, can, I can take you to the very place that I was standing when God spoke to me and God brought something back to my remembrance. He said, do you remember the time that you told me that all you wanted me to do was barely keep you going, just keep you on the field, amen, and give you a vehicle on an occasion just to keep you going? God said, I'm doing that. But 
even God begin to deal with me. You don't have to have. every sermon there is in the Bible. Don't know where I'm going to get the next one from, but God always comes through. He has never failed to give me a message. When I felt like I preached ever, I, I talked to Brother Frank Fulton one night, and he said, Brother Toler, he said, did you know I was preaching revival over there, over Com uh, Woodville? He said, I preached for so many nights. He said, I preached some things I know and some things I didn't know. He said, I didn't know if they were right or not. <laughs> he said, but I preached.
Amen. God's got 66 bullets to give me a message out of. Now, I don't know how many chapters and verses. 31,000 and some chapters. 31,000. Have I ever preached 31,000 sermons yet? I don't believe. That's chapters. That's not counting, but that's not saying verses. Eleven hundred eighty nine chapters, over thirty one thousand verses. Whew. That's good. I'll use that tomorrow when I go to pray. <laughs> I'll say, God, they've got to be thirty one thousand messages in your book. Huh? Some preachers can preach three nights and preach out. I go to another church and preach them same three again. <laughs> Somebody told me, he said, you evangelists, said, you rascals has got it made. One time I was in, in Alabama, a, a pastor told me, he said, man, said, you, you, you evangelists has got it made. He said, you can take three sermons and go to the world with it. <laughs> but where I got that first one from, he could give me another one. What God, amen, could do tonight if we would take the limitations. We've seen God come through time after time after time. Every time we went through a battle, we thought we couldn't get through that one. Amen. God brought us to it. Amen. And the same thing you're going through tonight. Amen. God will bring you through it if you hold to him. I say you'll bring it on. When you go through that one, you'll be faced with another one. But you've got to look back and say, God brought me through that one. And he's going to get me through this one. Church, listen here. They, some of you sit here not. God's been mighty good to. Some of you have been serving God for 50 years. And, and you've seen God do miraculous things. And you're here tonight. And how in the world can we stand here tonight and doubt God? God, I've seen God do great things in 20 years. I couldn't imagine 50. You, you always been serving God 50 years. You've, been, you've seen depression. You've seen soup lines, man. I mean, where people was, amen, in soup lines looking for something to eat. And 50 years later, look what God's done. Hey, man, church. God's been mighty good to us. How can we doubt God now? Come right to the border of the promised land and said uh, there are giants in the land. They seen God drive their enemies and everything out before them. You know what they should have said? They should have said, that don't matter. Take the limits off and God must go in and possess the land. Watch here now. Let me show you. Give me just a few minutes. Please. Let me show you this. They saw him walk on water. Seen him turn water to wine. And I never forget that little story I heard that, that preacher tell. He said he got pulled over. A man got pulled over and said they was giving sobriety tests and everything, and a cop shined the light in his window and said, Are you drunk? He said, No, sir, don't drink. He had some wine bottles in the back end of his car, and the cop said, Well, what's these wine bottles doing here if you don't drink? He said, that's water. So that cop got it out and pulled the top off of it, smelled of it, tasted it, it was water. Said, he said, sir, this is wine. Said, he looked at him and said, well, he's done it again. <laughs> Woo! And you know what? He's going to do it again. I said, he's going to do it again. God healed me once, he'll do it again. If God paid my bills once, he'll pay them again. If God got me through 
Amen, church. They saw him do every bit of that. And he took him into a desert place, and the Bible said, He looked at him and they'd been with him for so many days. And he said, they said, Lord, send them away. He said, they, they don't need to be sent away. He said, if you send them away, he said, they'll faint by the way. These people been with me for uh, uh, several days and ain't eat nothing. He said, if we send them away, they'll faint. Thank God. Hey, man, God will never see us faint. He'll never see us leave. He'll never see us go hungry. He said, don't send them away. The disciples said, send them away, Master. Jesus said, he was talking with them. I believe, I believe he did it. I believe you already have. He looked at him and said, what have you got? He said, they don't need to go. So we'll feed them. Why, Lord, said 200 pennies worth. It's not sufficient enough to feed this it's monotone. Jesus said, sit him down. Sit him down and what have you got? And they said, well, we got a little boy right here. He said he's got five loaves and how many fish? Two fish? Two fish and five loaves? Jesus said, bring them to me. You know what Jesus was seeing if they'd take the limits off of him? They said, we ain't got but just two, two fish and five loaves of bread. Hey Amen. Praise God, Jesus said, bring him here to me. And you know what they did? They took the limits off of him and they put it in his hand. Hey, you know what he did? He looked up and he blessed it. Hey Amen. And listen what he did. Now watch here. The miracle didn't happen. God will bless what me and you do, but you know what he'll do? He'll put it back in mine and your hand and see what we're going to do with it. He put it back in their hand and you know what the Bible said? Hey man, he said, now, now feed them. Feed them. And I believe, I believe with all my heart as they begin to go out and distribute it back. Hey man, God begin to miraculously supply the need, didn't he? Hey Amen. So you know what he did? He said, 5,000 men, not counting women and children. Hey Amen. And you know what they did? They took up 12 baskets. Had 12 baskets left over. Take a limit off of God. Take a limit off of God. See what he'll do for you. Look over at your neighbor and tell him, say, take the limits off of God. Oh, How can we doubt God? Oh, mm -hmm. I traveled with a preacher. pastor one day and asked him for a meeting and all that pastor could do was whine he said I've lost my job and that brother that I traveled with that preacher that I traveled with you know what he said he said praise the Lord God will not fail us if you lose your job tomorrow God will not fail you if you'll serve him. Let me tell you something that I can honestly say this. I worked in the mines for a while. It seemed like I couldn't have nothing. And since I've come to God, I've had more than I've ever had in my life. And I know more than I ever have known. I've learned, amen, I know things that I didn't know. Hey Amen. I mean, when I graduated out of school, I graduated on a D double minus. They give me the double minus to get rid of. But I could probably go back to school now and outdo some of them. Because you know why? I serve a mighty God that can put it in you. 
some of the greatest men that God ever used, like William Branham and some of the great men of God, you know what? They had third grade education. They was another Jethro Bodine. But you know what? They was full enough to believe God, take the limits off of God. And they had some of the greatest ministries of miracles and signs and wonders that they ever was. And you know what? I'm a believer tonight that if Whitley Branch and you will help me and we'll work together and listen to the Word and let the Word cause faith to come alive in our heart, I believe there'll be a ministry spring right out of here that we'll see the miraculous, that we'll see mighty deliverances, and we'll see, amen, the hand of God. Amen. I mean, they should be miracles here every night. Every night, they should be a miracle. How's it going to happen, preacher? We got to take the limits. Yet, listen what the word said. And all of that, they tried God and limited the Holy One. Of Israel. Limited him, brother Otto. When they seen all that he did and said, Can God, can God. If we was to lose our job before daybreak, some of us would be a crime. God, I don't know how I'm gonna make it. I got news for you. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but God don't need McDonald's to take care of me. God don't need Wendy's to take care of me. Huh? God don't need all of that. Whenever God took care of that woman, the creditors were coming to get her son. She took that oil and began to pour it out. And she just kept pouring. Let me ask you this. Where did all that oil come from? If you read your Bible, she didn't have it, just a little bit of oil. But where did all that oil come from when she began to pour? And she went out and bought vessels, not a few. She got all she could find, went to every neighbor's house and got every empty vessel. She could get a hold of them, went to the house and poured the oil in. Now listen what God does. Take the limits off of God. She said, Lord, the creditors are coming to get my sons. Amen. She poured that oil. She poured it to every vessel was full. Not a one left. Every vessel was filled. She went to the man of God and said, it's done as you've said. And every vessel was full of oil. He said, you go and sell it, man. Go sell the oil. And he didn't only listen now. Listen. God didn't just pay the debt for her sons. You know what else God did for her? He said, live off of the rest. Live off of the rest. I, I preached it to you here one time. God don't just meet your need. He goes beyond. He has to, he's done it all down through the Word. He didn't just pay the debt for the woman. He, meant he went beyond. On to Him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. Next time I go to God, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, God, I got such a little problem, I hate to even bother you with it. Huh? I got such a little problem, I hate to even bother you with it. Why are you such a mighty God? I got such a little problem. And here it is. I wish to God I had some sand here, and I'd give every one of you a grain. And I'd let you look at that grain. And I'd tell you that that's how big your problem is to God. Amen. Somebody got upset with Sambok not long ago. I hear Sambok said somebody got upset with him, so they called in and said, Sambok. Said, you, you, you get on that radio and tell us, oh, we ain't got no trouble. All we need is faith in God. You ain't got no trouble. He said, if you have faith in God, he said, you ain't got no trouble. Because you know what? Faith, amen, it gets you through that trouble, won't it? This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and delivered him, and saved him from all of his fears. Praise God. Praise God. I believe I'm going to set my boundaries out a little further, ain't you?
Amen. I don't let this stuff bother me. I mean, I don't worry about having a house. I, I don't worry about that. I'd like to have one someday, but I, I ain't going to worry my life away about it. I, I told Missy, I said, listen, I said, I know my mom and daddy's in pretty bad shape, but I'm not going to worry my life to death about it. Hey, man, let God be God. Let God be God, I said. Look over somebody and tell them, say, let God be God. I'm a firm believer that if my mom and daddy belongs to God, you know what? I believe you'll get a hold of them. I believe you'll raise them up in the last day. Praise God. Now I'm not going to spend my whole ministry, amen, crying and slinging snot and worrying, God, are they going to be saved or not? Amen. They got the opportunity. And I can't twist their hand and make them serve God. Let me tell you something, other church. Let me show you what God can do. Let me show you. I have seen a miracle. When I was six year old, my let me share this and close. I'll hurry and close. When I was six year old, my dad was paralyzed from the neck down in the mines at Linco. They said that if you'd have seen that, you'd have, there was no possible way that he should have ever come out of that alive. He was going in a, a motor, going into the mine, and he jerked him up, the top did, and that motor was going over, uh, they had a, a bridge fix, and he went up, and they said that it squashed him that in between the top and that motor, that his head was plumbed down between his face and squashed like a pancake. The doctors told my mother when they got him to the hospital, he had holes in his head that you could see his brains, holes in his hips, and things that, that, that you could see the bone squashed. And the doctors told my mama, said, don't you have no hope whatsoever. He'll never live. And there was a little preacher praying in Cleveland, Ohio. He called my mama and he said, Miss Cole. He said, I've been praying and fasting for your husband and said, God told me to tell you. And my daddy was critical. They have ten right here had had his head pulled back and you, would, you wouldn't have believed it to see him. Said, he'll never live. And that preacher told my mama, said, said he ain't going to die. Said, God told me, said he's going to live. And the doctors are telling her there's no hope. They said, we don't give you any hope. I'm not saying 5%. I said he'll not live. No hope at all. And that preacher said this, and I'll never forget it. He said, and you tell him that if he'll serve God, God told me to tell him he ain't going to die. I said, if he'll serve him, said, if he'll serve me, said, I'll heal him. I'll raise him up. Amen. Amen. Let me see how many years. I can't really remember. But how many years has he been crippled? 30 some years. He's still alive tonight. How can we doubt God? And you see. It was up to him. God said. And if you'll serve me. I'll heal him. I believe, Judy, if, if, if he'd have been serving God, hard to tell him where he'd have been tonight. But you know what? Listen here. I don't, it don't matter to me what condition his body lays in tonight. If you look at my dad, he ain't got no muscles whatsoever in his body. He's, he's, de, he's deteriorated. He's, he's, he looks like a rack of bones, don't he, Missy? Skin with, uh, skin with bones. But it wouldn't surprise me one bit that God's got him set aside for the last day. Somebody said, but preacher, what if he dies tomorrow? If he dies tomorrow, I praise you, Jesus. I love the Lord. I thank God. Amen. God is still God. Amen. Or some of you say preach.
preacher. Why am I in the condition I'm in? You know what? I used to preach one time that sickness wasn't for the glory of God, but I read it in the Bible. They looked at Jesus and said, Who sinned, this man or his parents? Jesus said, Neither, but this is for the glory of God. I got news for you. There's people tonight walking the streets, hey amen, in hospitals that's in the condition they're in that God is going to get glory out of them in the last day. God may be saving her just for this last day move. To do a miracle. I mean, do something miraculous. Let me tell you something. Other. I was in a meeting last night, closed out a revival last night. Amen. And a woman stood with doctor reports and read them, got them in the mail a few days ago. Her husband, even the doctor, wrote on his papers and said something miraculous. Said, we don't know how, but this man has lived when he was supposed to be dead. Said something miraculous has happened. Take the limits off of God and see what he can do. I said, take the limits off of God. They had him on a breathing machine and everything, Wanda. Bill was in a bad shape, wasn't he? Bad shape, bad condition. Doctor said, there ain't no way. He's healthy as he can be tonight. Going strong. Praise God. And you know why? His little wife stayed with him and prayed and said, God, I'm believing you for a miracle. I'm believing you, God, to heal him. I'm believing you to raise him up. Amen. And if God raised him up, God will do the same thing for you. He'll do the same thing for me. If you'll take the limits. I mean, you can't even believe God to save our families. It'd be so simple. So simple. Some of you said, my family's in drugs, and they're, they're in drugs and in things heavily. I don't care how deep they are. God can get them out. I said, is there anything too hard for God? I said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? He said to Abraham, he said, Abraham, is there anything? Let me say one more thing at this end. God spoke it to my mind just as clear a while ago. When he spoke to Ahaz. Oh, I believe it's the seventh chapter of the book of Isaiah. He said, Isaiah. Well, he spoke to Ahaz and he said, let me. He said, Ahaz. He said, ask of me a sign. Ask it in height and in depth. You know what God was really saying to Ahaz? Ask anything you want. Don't matter. And see what I can do. God told him, he said, he said, he said, ask it in height and in depth. And see what I'll do. What would you do tonight if God was to ask you? Ask you anything you want. What would you ask for? What would you ask for tonight if God say, ask anything of me that you want in height or in depth? And see if I won't do it. I'm a believer tonight. If me and you will ask God and hold fast to it, I believe we'll see it performed. No matter what your petition is. Ask Him. What's the hardest thing you'd ask God to do? Say, Gina. That ain't no sweat on God's brow. Ask God to heal her. You shouldn't go around saying don't look like it ain't going to be done. You should be going around here saying it's already done. Huh? Hey Amen. I told her coming down here, I said, me and you don't shut up. I said, we're going to talk ourselves into a battle. I said, we're going to talk ourselves into depression. You can do it too. Be driving down the road and devil, devil's right in the middle of you and you're sitting there and you're talking about, oh Lord, nothing's worked out, nothing's going right, no, 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 no. I told Dale when I walked in, I said, man, I missed it. I said, I was up there for six days and didn't have a worry. And I said, just as soon as I got home, all of it piled right in, the worries and all. I 
six peaceful days. The very word Missy told me to get. Said you all go up there and get away. Said I can't. <laughs> but I know where we can get lost in the presence of God. Hey man, church, you love him tonight. Look over to your neighbor and peck him on the shoulder. Will you? Peck your neighbor on the shoulder for me. Get their attention. Some way, if you've got to pull their hair to get it, get their attention. If you peck them on the shoulder and they're sitting there like, if you've got to pull their hair, look at them and say, take the limits off and die. Amen. Amen. I said, take the limits off of God. I said, take the limits off of God. If we're going to see God do anything in any branch, we've got to take the limits. You should leave this building tonight with new hope. Amen. Ain't a one of you here tonight should leave this building. If you come discouraged, you should leave encouraged. Let me let me say this. A few months ago, me and Missy were supposed to get back the income tax, and the way we only way we got it back something we didn't even know, and we've been getting cheated out for two years and didn't even know it, but where we was on certain amount of income, we were supposed to get a certain amount of money back for having Jordan. I don't know what they called it, but somebody knew what they were doing. You were supposed to get a certain amount of money back. I don't even know what they called it. But we were supposed to get back enough, exactly the amount that we needed to get our organ paid off. And they called me on the phone, the RS did, and said, you said, made a mistake. Said, you filled uh, the wrong line out one place and said you made a, 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 a mistake and they said you ain't do what the paper said but said we'll send what you're due and I told Missy I was segregated I said see there I said every time we think we're going to get get something amen it just falls through but you know what Missy looked at me and said let's hold on said God will make it up somehow and it wasn't but a few days God made it up amen Man, you know what? God's done everything in the world to try to get me and you to believe. He's come through time after time after time. And still yet, still yet, we sit around and say, Take me off. I love him, don't you? Take the limits off from God. Go ahead, go ahead.
That I was thinking about what a neighbor of mine was telling me ever been a few days ago. He talked about the neighbor down the street several years ago when he first moved there, about 15, 20 years ago. That that neighbor tried to say that he owned some of his property. So he went and had a survey done and he owned eight feet beyond what he even thought he owned to start with. And I was thinking that as Gary's preaching that tonight. Devil's got some of our property. Amen. We need to get open up the surveyor and take back that property. Amen. Take the limits off of God. We can go farther. Amen. Take the limits off. Get past them boundaries. Amen. 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 Does anybody got anything before we go? Let's, let's get us a word. Who, who's got a word for Tuesday night? What's that? Joy, have we used that one? We haven't used that one? I thought we did. Joy, then. Get you a uh, scripture on joy. Just don't forget our names before we dismiss tonight. Anything else I'm missing? Need some janitors. We got any volunteers for doing it two weeks. Starting this week. Do it two weeks at a time. Got any volunteers? Barbara will do it. Anybody want to help her? Who said that? Okay. I will try to rotate it if you can. If you can come up and 